Brother Jeremy's going to be speaking in Romans 2, verses 19 and 20. And art, co and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them that are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of the babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in law. Amen. Flesh can only produce flesh. It can't climb any higher. It can't give any more. It can't please God. It can't be in the presence of God. <clears throat> so what do we have if we don't have God? We, we can't get any higher than flesh. What do we have to offer? What do we have when we come into the presence of God? If we've given everything to flesh, if, that, if that's the best we have is, is flesh and we know it's not accepted, the best of flesh. See, God, what God's doing, He's showing us that the, the best of flesh, even the things that He has given to the Jews, that's the best. That's not acceptable. It comes up short. It can't see what God is doing. It just, it, it just comes so far, and that's it. But to, but to have what God has and to be able to be in the presence of God, we have to have more. And he's showing us this here. He's taking a people that have all advantages and saying, this isn't enough. I'm going to show you that you need a Savior. You... But see, flesh can't see this. So the Lord has, he has, he has put this together. And he's drawn this out so he could, he take a people and shown that, look, with the people with all the advantages, they still, it's not enough. There are men who put a lot of faith in different things. Learning, understanding, some who memorize things that, that they, they can just, whatever they've memorized, they can, they can just re, regurgitate what they, but see, it's still not, it may sound very high and, and with great understanding to men, but this does, does nothing for God. You're not going to impress God on Judgment Day because of some things that you have been able to do to impress men. Now, we're... This, this, that's, on a, that's a low level. Now we're talking about the Jews who God gave. He, he gave them these things that are advantages. And all the, there was no other people, and there is no other people that God gave more to than the Jews. Ad, great advantages. The Jews, they knew the law. They had understanding of the law. They... They were able to uh, explain the law, but they still came up short. Today we have it that people, they, they continue to put a lot of emphasis on, on procedures and going through the motions. But if your heart's not in it, if you, have, if you don't have a heart that's been changed, it means nothing. Procedures and in, in going through the motions, that, that's an empty vessel. It's God who gives understanding. It's God who changes the heart. It's God who, he, without God, you see, we're just empty vessels. It may look good to men. You may be very impressive to men. You may have a lot of men who th are very impressed with you, but you're not going to impress God. Yeah. Romans 1.18 says, The wrath of God is against men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. All who live in sin cannot have understanding. You come up short. Mm -hmm. Flesh always comes up short. <coughs> truth cannot be seen. It's suppressed. See, the Jews, with everything that they were given, they, they still didn't have 
this understanding of God. It came up short, and the truth was suppressed. Because it's God who gives the understanding. Matthew 13, 11 says, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. God gives, the, God gives this. You're not going to come up with this on your own. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're the Jews who was given, the, he given more than any other men. They still, they couldn't unlock the mysteries. We cannot look at our abilities and have confidence in this. If anybody could look at their abilities and, their, and what God, God gave this to them, if anybody could do this, it would be the Jews. But what confidence did they have? Because flesh can only go so high. Our confidence that we have is only in God. It's only in what God is doing through His Son, Jesus Christ. Can we have confidence? If a man thinks he is wise, he must... Maybe he's wise to others who think it, look at him with great wisdom, but not to God. Not to, to those things which that have to be known and understood. Not to those things like Jesus Christ, who, when he came here, they didn't know that he was the Savior. Why didn't they? With all their great understanding and all, all their uh, uh, outward appearing of being righteous and holy. In the flesh, I mean, they, they gave it their best being righteous and holy on the outward appearing. But when the Savior came, why didn't they see it? Because it was withheld from them. Mm -hmm. Only God can open this up. Yeah. Amen. Because someone studies the Word of God and may even memorize it, it doesn't make one wise. It doesn't make one given the, uh, with the ability to unlock, unlock mysteries and, and give them great understanding that only God can do. It doesn't give them understanding of God. God, He's the one who gives understanding. He's the one who gives wisdom. God's the one that unlocks these mysteries. It's by God's grace that we may have understanding. Remember Paul, when he was Saul, he was wise in the law. I'm not going to go through everything that, that Paul, but he, if anybody could boast in the flesh, it would have been Paul. If he was going to, but he did not. He was there when Stephen was stoned. <clears throat> Acts six ten says, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Stephen spoke with wisdom. Where did that come from? It didn't come from the schools. It didn't come from the, the, the authority of that time. It came from God, this wisdom. But you see, they, they didn't know what to do with him, so they had to stone him. They had to put him to death because they couldn't, they couldn't even keep up with what the Lord was showing him in, in opening up. So where did he get this? He got this from God. This wisdom came from God. That's, that's the point I'm making here, is it's from God. He had an obvious heart for God. See, if your heart's not changed, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how good you look to men. It doesn't matter how well you present yourself and how disciplined, because if anybody was disciplined, it was the Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. It doesn't matter how disciplined you are and how well you look before men. If you're not changed on the inside, you have nothing. The Jews were given advantages by God and had Discipline that was at the peak was more than any other man had. And they were a special people, a people chosen by God to, to bring this out, that we needed a Savior. Humanity could not attain to the righteousness that God 
not only expects, has to have before that you could be in his presence. You, you're not going to be able to be in God's presence without having his righteousness. Amen. Your righteousness, as good as you may have been from the beginning, and Paul is a, the best example that we know of, that he did in the flesh the best that he could have from the beginning all the way up to the time that he came to see Christ, it was not good enough. Yeah. Filthy rags. Amen. So this was God who's doing this. God, is, he's, 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 he's doing a great work here to show us how much we need a Savior. Stephen, he only spoke the truth. And before these men, who thought they had great understanding, all they could do is stone him. Renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, Colossians 3.10. Men, men cannot bring righteousness. They can go through the motions, but they cannot bring righteousness. They can't do it. It's only God that can produce the righteousness that is, that is needed. God does this, and it's His righteousness. They think that they were a guide to the blind. Now, this is what they thought. Yeah. See, this is what God didn't say they're a guide, a guide to the blind. This is what, that's how they perceive themselves. instructors of them, of the foolish, a teacher of babes. Jesus said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up. That doesn't sound like a guide. That doesn't sound like a light to those in darkness. He said, you shut up. The kingdom of heaven against men, Matthew 23, 13. What kind of a light is that? Here's the light. You shut the door. You haven't brought anybody to a light. You haven't let anybody. You're shutting the door. That's hardly a light at all, I would think. You, you, your abilities have shut the door. We need to be pure in the eyes of the Lord. More than just an outward appearance. It's an inward change. That only God can do. We can't do enough. No matter how much we try, we can't do enough to make this change. So all the advantages that the Jews had, and they still could not be pure and righteous before God. With all the great advantages, they still came up short. People say they live pretty good lives. There's people who say, I, I live a pretty good life. I'm a good person. God's going to accept me. Or some other, some may say of other people, hey, he doesn't do everything right, but he's a pretty good guy. God, surely God will accept this guy. He, he's nice. Nice person. But see, it's not good enough, brother. Yeah. That's not going to get you into the kingdom of God. But what are we waiting for here? God's saying, I have provided a Savior for you. Amen. Stop trying to do it on your own. I'm going through great lengths to show you that I made a people that if anybody could have made it, they would have made it. But they came up short. I am your God. Seek me. I sent a Savior, my Son, Jesus Christ. Come to Him. We don't come close to God by giving it our all. The Jews did and they were not accepted without Christ. Not on their own righteousness I'm talking about. They needed God's righteousness just like we did. And if they needed God's righteousness, how much more do we need God's righteousness? This righteousness is not a ticket that gives us freedom to sin, but on the contrary, it's a righteousness that makes us hate sin. See, when we, the, the righteousness that we're talking about, when we get close to God, 
We, we, we are like God. We hate sin. We hate everything. We hate our own selves because of this body that we're in. We look forward to the day that we can shed this body. We, we don't invest everything into the world. We see the world's going away. See, yeah. when, you, when you come to a point where you're, you're like, this is all, why would I invest another moment for this world? Amen. Why would I invest another moment for this, this, this body, this tent, Paul calls it, that's going to be shed? But people do. They spend all their time and resources for, a, for what? I mean, it only makes sense that if you're going to spend your time and resources for something, you want something back, right? I mean, that's just, that's just common. But it's because they're blind. They cannot see this. That, that they put everything into this world that's going to be passing away. They put, they've, they've invested time and resources in things that are going to be passing away. See, we're, we're investing our time and resources in the Lord. Amen. And His Savior, Jesus Christ. Because this is eternal life, brethren. This is the only, for those who believe, this is eternal life. It actually gives us a pure hatred for sin. Sin separates us from God. What is the scariest thing for us, brethren? To go through a hard trial in this world? Or to be separated from our God. Amen. I know I'll speak for myself. That no matter what this world has to offer. No matter what I have to go through. Whatever trial I have to go through. Amen. The only thing that scares me is to be separated from my God. Amen. I don't care what happens in this world. I know it's going to pass away. But to be without my God for eternity. Well he says you don't have to be without me. I'm sending my son. That you believe in Him. Amen. We cannot place our trust in procedures that don't even come close to what the Jews had. Our faith and trust is in God. It's in His Son, Jesus Christ. And without Jesus, we have nothing. We can be confident in Jesus. Everything else will fail. But Jesus... He will not fail us. He did not fail us. And he will never fail us. Amen. Now today, it has already been brought up about Nicodemus when he came to talk to Jesus at night. I believe it's because he wanted to have a, a time that he could have a discussion with him without with all the crowds and everything. When he asked, I mean, this is, this is some, Jesus called him, you a master? He called it, he said, you're a master, and you don't know these things? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And with all his great learning, Nicodemus says, how can these things be? But see, that's the way it is in the flesh. He can only climb so high. Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things, Jesus says? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Those who are born again. I mean, if anybody should have known this, it would have been Nicodemus. But see, that's the way it is. It can't, without Christ Jesus, without Jesus, it's not going to be opened up. But Jesus will open it up to, to those who have a good heart. Those who want to know the truth. Those who don't want to know the truth, they won't be opened up. Amen. It'll, be, it'll be left to be to given in parables. Yeah. Let them say, oh, this is a hard thing and walk away. But it's not a hard thing if you, if you come to the one with the answers. It's not hard for those who love the truth. It's not hard for those who are seeking in the right place. That's wherever Christ is. We can be confident in Jesus. We needed more than a form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. The law is not just for the... 
the law is not just we have in our in in our mind it's written on our heart Hebrews 8:10 this is what God did he wrote it on our heart we have a new nature that wants what God wants not just going through the motions we can love what God loves we can we can desire the things that God has a desire for us to desire. To understand God's word is not enough. But to have eternal life, you must believe in Christ Jesus. We, the form is, is not enough, brethren. It's like, I was thinking about it, it's like a, a marriage. Where two people come together and you, 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 have, you, you say the vows... And then the man walks away, and he's got the vows, he's got the paper, and he just walks away. Thirty years later, he says to his wife, yeah, we're married. Where did you go? He said, well, I had the paper the whole time. I went over it daily. I had a mug that said I love my wife, and a shirt, and a bumper sticker, and the whole nine yards. But she said, well, I haven't seen you. What kind of a marriage is that? But we have people today who says, yeah, I love God. But they don't have anything to do with him. They may have all the outward appearances and going through the motions. But do they really love God? A form is not enough. Although a person may know what the scriptures say, but they do not live close to God. They really have nothing to do with God. They will not have God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. You may have the approval of men, but not of God. So what's the difference? Who, who cares if you have the approval of men, but you do not have the approval of God? Mm -hmm. Men may, they love themselves, mm -hmm. but that means nothing to God. No flesh should glory in his presence, 1 Corinthians 1.29. The world and flesh has nothing to offer. So we say, put your, flesh, your, faith, put your faith in God. Just knowing the law or the form of knowledge is not enough. God said, I, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. See, this is what God does. Yes, Amen. We can't do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, mm -hmm. We could try as hard as we might. Mm -hmm. But it would never happen. It never happened with the Jews. Yeah. They were given every advantage. Mm -hmm. But they could not do this. Mm -hmm. They could not put the law in their inward parts. Mm -hmm. That they were changed on the inside. That was Jeremiah 31, 33. This is a work that God does, and only God can do. I will do this. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, Hebrews 8, 10. See, not only is this a work that the Lord does, he's telling us, look, I'm going to do this. Now, you need confidence, right, brother? Mm -hmm. This is confidence. That God is working on your behalf. That he is, he is not desiring that his wrath come down. And his wrath will come down. Amen. But this is not his desire that his wrath come down on his people. So he, he's laying this out for us. That, is this what you want? I'll do this, God says. Yeah. I'll work on your behalf. I'll give you what you need. I'll send you a savior that will, that will give you the righteousness that is needed to stand before me. God does this. Our God, brethren, is a saving God. Amen. He is not a God that's looking to destroy, but to save. Yeah. He's not looking to cast you out, but to bring you in. It's those who go somewhere else that have left God. But God says, come to me. I am a saving God. 
This is how our God is. First we believe, and he says, follow me. Remember, Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew 4.19. See, I'm just using this example. This is how he works. Come with me, and I'll do what is. See, they couldn't do this on their own. Be fishers of men. How could you do that? But he said, follow me, and I'll make you. I'll make you. I will change you. Amen. I will make you who you need to be. If your heart is not for God, it doesn't matter how much you do in the name of God, you're not going to be accepted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may say, look at what I've done. I've done great things in the name of the Lord. Really? You did it? Mm -hmm. See how far that's going to get you. Matthew 7, 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, in thy name, we have done many wonderful works. He will say, I never knew you. This is what they said. They said, we've done many wonderful works. Haven't we? The Lord said, I never knew you. Where, where were you at doing all these wonderful works? You claim you've done wonderful works. I never even knew. I mean, he says, I never knew you. Yeah. I mean, you, we understand this, brother. I know Brother Bob. Why? Because I spend time with him. I know Brother Tony. I know my wife. Because I spend time with her. He said, I never knew you. Yeah. Yeah. Where, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You can't do this on your own and be... And present it to God. And for him to accept it. This is a work that God does. So for us to, to attain righteousness and holiness that's acceptable to God. We cannot live our lives as though we are going to be doing it. God says, I showed you that I gave the best of the best to a people that if anybody could have attained it, they would have done it. And they came up short. Mm -hmm. I, I say, come to me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother.